Now, there was a post by Plant Fitness that said, support resilience under tough conditions. And he has a thing here. It says, from stress, recover. And the product is called Cross Trainer. And Preston Woods replied to him and said, nonsense, respectfully. <laughs> I don't know why I love that comment. That is just, that's just so great. Nonsense respectfully. That's just fantastic. I, I don't know why I love that. It's just fantastic. Two words. That just, that's my, that's my favorite tweet of the year. I, I, I'm trying to, I've been trying to figure out why I love that comment for two weeks, I swear. <laughs> and then Plant Fitness replies back and says, can you clarify what you find dubious? And he replies back and says, I find your product to be highly overpriced and accommodating to someone who doesn't truly know how to take care of turf grass. Therefore, in my opinion, you're taking an opportunity to teach and instead Instead, selling a product that contains 1% nitrogen with a Hulk on the bottle. And I say, I reply to these types of claims on my YouTube channel rather than Twitter. I will address this in June during my comments video, which is tonight. In the meantime, you are correct, and you may want to look up a type 3 error. I'm going to go over that just right now, actually. This uh, website is called Plant Fitness. And you can see some of the products, the Cross Trainer 004 and, and this Cross Trainer here, or whatever this is. So what's in it is potassium humate, potassium acetate, 4% potassium, polymeric stabilizers, sugar, and amino acids. It must not be many amino acids because they're not labeling the nitrogen here. But it's a potash with some amino acids and sugars. When you go to the claims, so ask, first of all, is it biologically plausible? Well, if you have a potassium deficiency, which you almost never have, maybe. The sugars, probably not. The amino acids has some nitrogen in it, so it's plausible, maybe. I mean, it's possible. Um, so there's some nitrogen in it from amino acid, but they don't label the nitrogen. Okay. So it's possible. But what you can do is you can go on the their website and look at their quote-unquote research. And I told Preston, or I, no, I said uh, in a prior YouTube video, I think, no matter what they say to you on that Zoom meeting or in person or on the phone, nothing that they tell you is going to or should be influencing you unless they hand you a refereed paper. Zip. Nothing. I don't care if they have a professor walk in right next to him on the Zoom meeting and sit there next to him. If that professor's there, then say, thank you for being here, professor. Where's your publication on this? And if he goes, oh, it's in process, then go, thank you. Send me, send me the publication as soon as it's published. Until then, I don't want to talk about it. It's useless. It's all just marketing propaganda. Why do I say that? If you go to their website, they're going to pull up university research. And the, and, and the, the industry loves using universities to create propaganda. Okay, What they'll do is they'll go to the university and say, I want to do, the, uh, do a test here, two or three treatments. I'm going to run it for six months. How much would you charge me to do it? And they're going to, you're going to do it and you're going to see a response and you're going to give them the data back. And then what they'll do is they'll take those data and they'll pick out whatever is most flattering to their product. And they'll just show that. Okay. So when you see this, this is a, a trial, a sheet here that says untreated control and the cross trainer product, which is what he talked about. 130% turf quality improvement, 400% more turf cover. So on the y-axis, we have turf quality. On the y-axis down here in the next graph, it has percent turf cover. These massive benefits to this product called Cross Trainer. Okay, this is very common. University of Arkansas, by the way. Next one, the same thing. University research. Univer Oregon State University. 58% reduced infection center counters, center counts. 60% reduction in microdochium disease cover. You'll see these. You see the lines here, untreated and strength in, the, in their product, untreated in their product. And you you see all these these numbers, and you're going to go, oh man, they did this at you know Oregon State, and they did this at Arkansas, and there must be some benefit to this. I'm going to try it. What I'm letting you know now is that this is what's called a type three error. It's probably an example of a Texas sharpshooter fallacy, and it's probably cherry picking, but for sure, it's a type three error. So what is a Texas sharpshooter fallacy? Having been on that side of the industry, we would run 15, 16, 20, 25 studies at these different universities. Do you think we really showed all 25 results on the marketing flyers? 25 studies from 25 universities at marketing, marketing flyers from the company I work for? No, we only showed the results of the studies that were flattering to our product. We didn't show the other ones. That is the Texas sharpshooter fallacy. I don't know if that's what they did here. Oregon State and Arkansas might have been the only two studies they did. Could have been. But because I know what goes on in the background, I'm not convinced. It doesn't affect me at all. Did they do a study with just untreated and strength, their product? Possibly. But they could have done it with untreated and strength and two or three or four or five other products. And maybe those four or five other products resulted in better results than their product did. But they pulled those out and just showed their product. They could have done that. They might not have done that. 
they might have just done their product in, in untreated control. That, maybe that's all they did. That's the reason what I'm saying is, is that it might be a Texas tar- sharpshooter fallacy. It might be cherry picking, but guaranteed it's a type three error. And what is a type three error? A type three error is you're answering the wrong question. And on the screen here, you see untreated versus strength. The untreated versus their product. I don't care at all what your product does relative to untreated turf grass. I could not care less. That is the wrong question. What I care about is how does your product compare to the industry strand standard nutritional program? And that is half a pound a in, pound a in, maybe it's an MPK. That's what I want to know. And in addition to that, I want to know how your product compares to that standard control, the, the gold standard agronomically, as well as economically. Because yes, you might have a product that results in great turf grass. Let's say it results in 10% better c- color than straight urea. But if it costs three times more than urea, then I'm just going to apply 10% more urea. I'm not going to spend two or 300% more on your product to get 10% more response when I can just apply urea for 10% more. So this is a type three error. You have to ask the right question. And if they ask the correct question, which is how does this product compare to an industry standard nutritional program, you probably wouldn't see any difference. <laughs> and yet for sure wouldn't see a beneficial difference when it comes to the cost of the program. The cost of urea programs, and let's use ammonium sulfate programs or ammonium nitrate programs, whatever, the cost of those programs is virtually impossible to beat. It's virtually impossible to get less expensive for the response you get from those products. It's extremely, extremely rare to see that occur. Could occur, very rare. So to Preston who asked this question on Twitter, My response would be is, I don't know what happened on your Zoom meeting, but I hope uh, the channel helped you critically think your way through and not get deceived or convinced to use their product for bad reasons. If they gave you a refereed paper and said, go ahead, you know, this is the refereed paper, then then we talk. Why do I rely so much upon those on the refereed papers? The reason is because of this levels of evidence. When you talk about background information, which is just, you know, university, fly university said this, professor said this. I saw uh, my buddy down the street does this. All of that occurs at the bottom of this pyramid, including expert opinion. This is just my opinion on it. This is Travis Shaddix's opinion. Travis Shaddix's opinion is the same as somebody else just saying something down the street in terms of the level of evidence. It doesn't affect me at all. As you go up and up, this is medical evidence, but then you go up and up and up, you get more and more confident. You get, the quality of evidence goes up. And in the world of turf grass, randomized controlled trials is at the very top here, right below systematic reviews and meta-analysis. So randomized controlled trials is what we do in turf grass science. And that's not included in any university research that's not published. If you don't publish it, all of that marketing propaganda at Oregon State and Florida and Kentucky and wherever else you did your work at company ABC, all of that is at the bottom of this pyramid and is evidentiary equivalent to just rumors and hearsay. You have to publish it or I don't care.